demyelinating type disease is that once the fatty acids got to a certain point they could no longer they couldn't be metabolized further and that you know 21 carbon free fatty acids would build up it produces developmental delays and early death and all this kind of stuff so that, that is another type of uh, uh, inborn error for metabolism so <coughs> Uh, we're going to finish up here with the ankle and foot. Um, the um, first slide here involves bones. Uh, we know these uh, pieces and parts on this side over here. 
Uh, if you look at the tibia and the fibula, there are three parts of a bone that you should uh, be familiar with. There's the, the end of the bone is the epiphysis. The narrowing right there, the, the neck, if you will, is called the metaphysis. And the shaft itself is the diaphysis. So when you're describing a bone fracture, to, you know, I need to refer this patient to you. Uh, she's got a, a transverse, complete transverse fracture through the metaphysis. That tells the orthopedic surgeon one thing versus through the diaphysis. So you need to know these three parts of a bone, and they apply to all bones, uh, long bones anyway. Um, if you look at the uh, tib fib area, it has an interosseous membrane <coughs> just like the radius and ulna that's open at the top for passage of an artery, just like the interosseous artery that you saw coming off of the ulna there. The one thing about this uh, interosseous uh, membrane is that it, you know, we were talking about compartment syndrome yesterday with the thigh. This produces also a compartment that I'll talk about in just a second. Um, when you look at bones, uh, you'll see a lot of little holes. These are for nutrient vessels. You can see these on x-ray a lot of times, and people say, oh, that's a fracture. No, that's, that's just a nutrient parameter for a nutrient vessel. So uh, be aware of that when you're trying to read x-rays. Um, we've learned all of the pieces and parts all the way down to this, um, this <coughs> slide here. I will emphasize the tibial tuberosity because we're going to talk about a disease today that involves a tibial tuberosity towards the end. Um, and this one right here, we pick up and start going down into the leg. And there's really nothing uh, that you need to know uh, beyond the tuberosity until you get down <coughs> to the ankle. Uh, when you get into the ankle, the two bones of the leg form a, uh, a, an upside-down U. The medial bone this protrusion here, or uh, uh, enlargement, is the medial malleolus. That comes off the tibia. The tibia is medial. The fibula is lateral, hence the lateral malleolus right there. These things form, um, now while the tibia is the only bone that participates in the hip, I mean, excuse me, the knee, both of these bones participate in the, the ankle. Now, Sitting on that upside down U is the talus, and that forms a nice hinge joint right there at the ankle. A nice hinge joint right there. That hinge joint is called the mortise, the ankle mortise. So when you have disruptions of the ankle mortise, you have an unstable, uh, like from a malleolar fracture, you have an unstable ankle. From the talus, uh, you have the, the um, tarsal bones, we'll go over those in a second. The metatarsals, five metatarsals, and the phalanges are uh, displayed out just like your uh, hand. Two bones for the great toe and three for the, um, for the uh, four digits. Okay, the compartments of the leg, well the thigh had two compartments, the leg has three. The, um, Here's the interosseous membrane you see right there. In front of the interosseous membrane and um, <coughs> laterally is the, an, is the anterior compartment because medially it's taken up by the tibia. So the anterior compartment is kind of anterior lateral right there. You can feel the medial part of the... Didn't the thigh also have three? Yeah, I thought it had posterior. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I, when I think of the thigh, I always forget the adductor, uh, the, the medial line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the, the uh, but you're right, the, the thigh has three compartments. Um, so the anterior compartment is anterior lateral. But then there's a septum that produces, there's a septum right there that produces two muscles that are lateral to the fibula. That's the true lateral compartment. There are only two muscles in there, peroneus, longus, and brevis. Then you have this large posterior compartment. The posterior compartment has a superficial part and a deep part. The superficial part contains the gastrocnemius, and the deep part contains these three muscles here I'll talk about in a minute. 
The good thing about these three compartments is they each have a specific nerve and a specific artery that goes with it, as well as a vein. Okay? So they're very specific. You need to know what nerve and artery supplies the different compartments. Uh, if you look at the anterior compartment, there are three muscles. There's a large uh, tibialis anterior. That's the most uh, medial one. Beside that is the extensor hollicis longus. And then lateral to that is the extensor digitorum longus. So they, well, this was the pollicis. Your thumb was the pollicis. Your, your great toe is the hollicis. It goes all the way down to the tip of the toe. There's not really an extensor expansion like we saw in the fingers. It goes right down to the tip of the toe. Uh, fibularis tertius, another name for that is peroneus tertius, comes off of the extensor digitorum longus. You'll see it in subsequent slides. So it doesn't have a muscle belly up in the anterior compartment. The nerve is the deep peroneal or deep fibular nerve. And the artery is the anterior tibial. And what they do is, is um, so the extensor hollicis, obviously it extends the great toe, extensor digitorum longus, obviously the four lateral toes, tibialis anterior dorsiflexes the foot. Tibialis anterior dorsiflexes the foot. And because of its insertion, it also eberts the foot slightly. It can evert the foot slightly. It everts the foot. There's not a lot of eversion of the ankle because the mortise is just a hinge. It doesn't have side-to-side -side motion, inversion, eversion. Inversion and eversion is a function of the junctions between your tarsal bones and your metatarsals. So that's why you can fuse your ankle, you can fuse the tailor joint and the subtalar joint, and that just prevents this motion. It doesn't prevent that motion, because that motion is carried out by the foot, the bones of the foot. All right, here's the anterior compartment, um, and you can see uh, tibialis anterior, here's extensor hollicis longus, extensor digitorum longus, tibialis anterior comes down, uh, well, you can't really see it in this slide, All right. you see right here, right there. So you get, did I say eversion? No, 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 it's inversion. Tibialis anterior is inver slight inversion. Peroneus tertius is slight eversion. And peroneus tertius arises from the tendons of the uh, extensor digitorum longus. You can see it right here. It's more of a tendinous slip. It's not really a muscle. You see it right there? So it attaches laterally. Slight, it's a very weak everter of the foot, whereas tibialis anterior is an inverter. Dorsiflexor and inverter. <coughs> I had a patient one time in the emergency room that uh, was carrying a fish tank. And I, that's why I hate to carry fish tanks. And it was full of water. And he was walking to take it somewhere. And the fish tank just collapsed and just broke all over the place. And that sheet of glass went straight down, landed on the top of his foot. I guess it was barefoot, I don't remember now. But cut, every, severed every one of those tendons on the top of his foot. So that was a truly impressive um, uh, mess. So, oh, there you go. Um, the lateral compartment, uh, fibularis or peroneus longus, I don't care which term you use. I'm old school, so I still like peroneus. Remember, it's not perineal longus because that's in another part of your body. Uh, it's peroneus longus. These two muscles are uh, easy to find. The longus is on the outside. Brevis is next to the bone. 
where they attach in the foot, the peroneus brevis attaches right there at the base of the fifth metatarsal. The base of the fifth metatarsal. Peroneus longus comes down and then dives deep in the foot and goes all the way across the foot to attach at the base of the, of the toe, the great toe. You'll see it in a subsequent slide. So it crosses the foot. The, both of these muscles, they have two actions, and they're the same. They're, they're fl uh, plantar flexors because they're in the back. They come around behind. You see, they come around behind the lateral malleolus. So they plantar flex. And because they're on the outside, if they contract, they're going to evert the foot. These are the main everters of the foot. You can see them here. Here's the uh, peroneus brevis attaching right there at the base of the fifth metatarsal. Peroneus longus goes up underneath the uh, ligaments of the plantar surface of the foot to attach all the way over here on the, uh, the great toe. So plantar flexion and eversion. It says right here, avulsion by the plantar, uh, the uh, peroneus brevis, at the base of the fifth metatarsal is very common. That's called a Jones fracture. The bone breaks before the tendon ruptures. So if you have a, a violent, um, so if you're a, a basketball or something like that, and you're coming down from a great height, uh, doing a rebound or something, and you land, and your foot inverts, or um, you have a, a, a violent uh, inversion of your foot, whereas the peroneus brevis is trying to evert your foot, it can pop the base of the fifth metatarsal off, and that's a Jones fracture. Because that um, little uh, piece of bone is not well vascularized, it doesn't. You don't wind up with avascular necrosis. What you wind up with is non-union. So these things have to be uh, uh, carried, cared for by an orthopedic surgeon, and most of the time, they have almost 99% of the time. They have to put a screw in there to attach that little piece back onto the shaft because you just don't heal well and you're non weight bearing for a long time um, to let this thing heal. Jones fractures. This is not a fracture of the diaphysis, it's a fracture of the metaphysis, really. I think I may have a picture of it later on. Okay, the posterior compartment, uh, there are these five uh, muscles there. Well, really six. Gastrocnemius soleus are the two uh, predominant uh, plantar flexors of the of the uh, foot. They make up, of course, the Achilles tendon or the uh, tendocalcaneus. That, no, that's not what it's called. Achilles uh, tendon is called something else. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. Huh? It's just the no, it has, it has a name, um, but Achilles tendon is what everybody's going to know it by. There's another little muscle, though. That, this probably the, it, so in the in the realm of worthless muscles, what do we have? We have the anconius, you know. We have the plantaris. We have the what? Palmaris, Palmaris. pronator quadratus. That actually has a function in, in rotating the radius over there. But uh, palmaris longus, you know, you can even do without it. There's another one in the front of the abdomen. It's called the uh, pyramidal. Or uh, I, I made reference to it when we did the abdominal wall, but I actually didn't have that muscle in a slide because it's it's so variable and it's worthless, you know. Um, well, here's the fourth one that's absolutely worthless. This is uh, plantaris. Plantaris arises in, up here in the back of the popliteal fossa. You will see it today. And the, the tendon of the plantaris is long. It's about this long. The muscle belly is only like that. It's very short. It's like palmaris longus, muscle belly. But the tendon is very long. And it attaches in the calcaneus 
right there beside the um, Achilles tendon. <coughs> it is not part of Achilles tendon. It's a separate little muscle tendon. It attaches in the same area. The problem with that little tendon, though, is it's so small uh, during um, uh, you know, running, jumping, that sort of thing, you can, you can rupture the plantaris tendon. And it produces intense pain in the back of the calf that um, you, know, you do an exam on them, and you can't find, they have good strength in the plantar flexion, so it's not an Achilles tear, but it's still just horrendously painful. Uh, the only way to really diagnose it is with an MRI. That will show you the, the, uh, the, the disrupted tendon. When I was in anatomy, my uh, lab partner and I, um, when we got down here to the end, so the plantaris runs that way. We took the palmaris longus. I just graduated from PA school. So we took the palmaris longus and I sutured it in from the knee down into the Achilles so that it formed an X. So they looked exactly the same. It was an X though. And so I called, we called, uh, you know, we were, <laughs> it's funny. So we called Dr. Burden over. I said, Dr. Burden, what is this right here? Dr. Burden was this old Eastern North Carolina uh, white trash redneck professor. I mean, he was the epitome of the of an anatomy professor. He came over <coughs> and, he, and, he, and he bent down and he was looking at it. And, you know, I sutured everything over it so you couldn't tell that it was actually sutured in. It looked real. And uh, Wes and I were like, we were down there like, uh, you know, what's he going to say it is? Because it's not that. And we just, you know, we were you know, ready for him to make his uh, pronouncement about what this thing was. And he just reached in there and he grabbed it, jerked it out, and he said, Paul Mayer's longest. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. And Wes and I, we were down there, scared the piss out of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, there you go. The three muscles in the deep compartment are here. We have the extensors on the uh, anterior compartment. We have the flexors, the same flexors in the posterior deep compartment. Okay. These uh, three muscles here, uh, let me get to them before I explain those three muscles. Here we have the, uh, on, the, on the outermost, you have the two heads of the gastroc. You can split those easily. And between them, you're going to have the, the large uh, mass of the soleus. Again, these two, uh, these two calcaneal tendon, that's the word I was looking for. These two come together as the calcaneal tendon. You can see plantaris here. Plantaris, and underneath plantaris, what's that muscle right there? Popliteus, right, oh. yeah. They're both uh, oriented the same direction from a lateral to uh, medial uh, orientation. <coughs> so they run that way when you're looking in the cadaver. But that little tendon uh, runs with the calcaneal tendon uh, to insert down on the calcaneus bone. Okay? All right, so underneath that, um, you'll have the deep muscles. The deep muscles here, well, they're a little strange. Okay, so the and this person right here, the, the great, the big toe is over here, right? Big toe is over here. You've got um, flexor digitorum longus is on this side, and then flexor hollicis longus is on the lateral side. Peroneus uh, tibialis posterior is in the middle. So wait a minute. You've got there's the great toe, but the flexor hollicis longus is on this side, and the digitorum is on that side. So at some point, these two tendons have to cross, right? They have to cross. And where they cross is in is right here in the medial, uh, below the medial malleolus. I'll show you here in just a second. The nerve and artery of the posterior compartment is the um, posterior tibial artery, which is just a continuation of the sciatic, okay? And then there's the, 
when you get up here, here's the popliteal artery right there. The anterior uh, tibial is going to go into the anterior compartment above the interosseous membrane. And then the posterior tibial runs right down through here to the medial malleolus. So the nerve and the artery are right here behind the medial malleolus. Posterior tibial artery and the tibial or posterior tibial nerve. I'm not sure, did I mention the lateral compartment uh, nerve and artery? Yeah. The, okay, so the um, nerve of the anterior compartment is the deep peroneal. The nerve to the lateral compartment is the superficial peroneal. And a lot of you have already seen that. Uh, you have it dissected out already. I've seen it in the lab. Okay. Here's the, here's the medial malleolus right here. And here are the tendons. It, there's three tendons. Tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and then the artery and nerve, and then flexor hollicis longus. It's right here that the three that the two will cross. And the way you remember the orientation of these three tendons here is Tom, Dick, and Harry. Okay? From top to top down. Alright? I don't know, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Is that a, is that a was that an old movie or a song or something? Who came up with that expression? Tom, Dick, and Harry? Is it a movie or something? Okay. Anyway, there you go. During the physical exam, you're going to be palpating the uh, peripheral arterial pulses. Know that the posterior tibial pulse is behind the medial malleolus. Never let me see you palpate the lateral side looking for the posterior tibial artery. And you can feel it on yourself. It's, it's down here below the, um, below the medial malleolus. Okay? That's one of the two arteries uh, in the foot that will be uh, palpating on everybody. All right, nerves of the leg, here they are. The tibial, the sciatic nerve divides into the common peroneal and the posterior tibial. Posterior tibial continues down into the uh, posterior compartment, supplying all those five muscles or six muscles, and then continues down into the foot on the medial, I mean, by the medial malleolus as the medial and lateral plantar nerves. And it distributes in the foot just like the median and ulnar nerve distributed in, distribute in the hand. The first three and a half toes in that side of the foot are by the medial and then the lateral. There is no um, carpal tunnel syndrome in the foot, like we saw in the wrist, involving the medial plantar nerve. Now the common peroneal nerve, as I said, it was the most uh, commonly injured because of where it wraps around the head of the fibula, or the metaphys metaphysis of the fibula. It divides into a superficial and deep branch that you see here. The deep branch gets the anterior compartment the superficial branch gets to two, the peroneus longus and brevis. The deep branch, and this is hard to see, the deep branch, remember, gets that little triangle right there. The superficial branch gets the lateral part of the foot. It's actually the back side. Where is that? It's on another slide. The deep branch, remember, gets that triangle between the first and second toes. The lateral branch, because it's coming down the lateral side, the peroneus long as the breath, it's the lateral compartment. It just goes onto the lateral side of the foot. A couple of your cadavers have a really nice. Who are you? With the, did I point that out to you the other day, or did I just see it? You'll see it in the lab. It's a nice lateral. Um, innervation of the lateral foot, dorsum of the foot, um, which is important, again, in diabetes. Okay. Uh, if we look at the vasculature, there's the popliteal artery, there's the um, 
The anterior tibial goes again through the top of the interosseous, leaving the posterior tibial, which is behind the malleolus, and the branch of the lateral compartment is the fibular artery. You can also call it the peroneal artery. The veins of the leg, we've already been over this 9,000 times. Um, the greater or lesser uh, saponins or small saponins, um, these are superficial veins in the subcutaneous tissues. These veins will drain into the deep veins. You know the difference between the two and uh, the issue about DVTs and uh, um, you know, inflammation of the superficial vein that I'll show you in a subsequent slide. Now, let's talk about the ligaments here, the ankle. Uh, there's a, if you look at the, the support of the ankle, and everybody knows about ankle sprains, why is it that you always sprain your, your, the lateral side of your ankle? You never sprain the inside of your ankle. It's always the left. Your ankle is always easy to roll that way to invert. Try to invert. You can't. You can't very far. It's, but you can. You can walk on the sides of your foot. And it has to do with the ligaments that support the, the mortise. On the lateral side of the foot, you have four little bands that form the ligaments. You have this one right here, the anterior talofibular. That's the talus, and that's the fibula. They're just named where they come from going to, so they're easy to remember. There's an anterior and a posterior talofibular ligament. And there are two other uh, ligaments that attach the fibula with the calcaneus. <coughs> And we really don't need to worry about the other ligaments. The only one we need to worry about is this one, anterior talofibular. Because when you sprain your ankle, that's always the one that's ruptured. And it's, it's the one that's ruptured because how do you sprain your ankle? Most of the time, if you look at the, the ankle mortise, <coughs> The ankle is weakened. I mean, if I'm standing on my feet, that mortise is very strong. The weakest part of the mortise, or the ankle, is when my foot is plantar flexed, like this. So if I roll my foot like that, what ligament is stretched is the anterior talofibular. You see that mechanism there? I uh, wouldn't get up on this, but if your if your ankle is like that, uh, I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if your ankle is like this, and it inverts, yeah. it, it inverts like that. <laughs> that looks better. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what ligament is the is linked? Anterior to the fibular ligament. What what position? Uh, why would you ever be in this position except during class? Bas basketball. Ballet. When ballet. When you're coming down, like in basketball, when you're coming, when do you sprain your ankle in basketball? When you land. It's always when you're coming down from a rebound. That's when you roll your ankle just like that. And in ballet, on your when you're on point, yep. there you go. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, on the lateral side, I mean on the medial side though, you don't have four little uh, individual ligaments, you have one broad ligament that covers the entire medial side that's shaped like a triangle. <coughs> In Greek, that's delta. So this is called the deltoid ligament. 
the deltoid ligaments on the medial side, and it, because it's so massive, that's why you don't ever your foot. Simple uh, physics. Simple physics. If you look down here, here's the posterior talofibula right here. But there's the big, broad uh, deltoid ligament on that side. Okay? Um, remember yesterday, the thing up here about strain and sprain? So this is a, uh, a nice sprained uh, ankle. And most of the time, you don't even have to x-ray them. Uh, there are certain criteria that um, signal to you that this needs to be x-rayed. Uh, uh, I was just noticing it says it's tib or talofib, but it's a medial ankle there. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I tried to find a lateral, but it, this is a medial. Notice that's a medial side of the ankle. Okay. So that's, yeah. um, okay, so one of the things um, that's important about uh, when you x-ray them in, in terms of criteria is if you tap on the malleolus, then that's an indication to x-ray them because you don't want to miss a malleolar fracture since the talofibular ligament attaches to it. The other thing, and there's a reason why I use this picture here, is because is another criteria is if you have ecchymosis, ecchymosis is bruising above the malleolus, that's an indication for uh, x-ray. When you sprain an ankle significantly, you'll, you'll always see uh, some ecchymosis down here below the malleolus, but when it gets above the malleolus, you x-ray it. Those are the two biggest criteria. Yes, ma'am. For the first one, if you tap on, tap on it, is it pain or what? It, if it's painful, x-ray it. Okay. Because the ligament itself is over here. When you, when you palpate a torn uh, anterior uh, telofibular ligament, the pain is in front of the malleolus. But if you sit here and tap on the malleolus itself or poke, push on it, and it's painful, then you've got to worry about fracture. Okay? Do you just test the lateral or do you tap on both sides? Well, when somebody comes in with a sprained ankle, 99.9% of the time it's lateral and they don't have any complaints on the other side. Okay. Uh, good, put, hey, good pickup on the, the medial versus lateral, but I could not find a freaking picture with ecchymosis above the malleolus on a lateral ankle sprain. So, anyway. Uh, oh. uh, skip the yeah. Okay, this one right here is, um, you see this a lot in football uh, with linemen, where somebody will roll up on the ankle oh. of another uh, lineman. You see this a lot. What happens there is you'll usually wind up with malleolar fractures. Um, you can see in this type of injury right here, we've got a fracture of both the lateral and the medial malleolus. This is a pretty... Uh, you know, this is a season-ending uh, injury, obviously. You do a lot of damage to the to the ligaments when this type of things happen, and this is this is this is going to produce obviously an unstable ankle. The mortise is just uh, destroyed, so you're going to have to uh, go to surgery on this. Uh, this location of the ankle, these things are bizarre. I, I've never had one in the ER, um, but. You can dislocate your ankle. Now the bones of the ankle and foot here, we talked about the talus. There's the calcaneus. In front of it is the navicular. The navicular is like the navicular or the scaphoid of your wrist. It can undergo avascular necrosis. So any navicular fractures need to be handled by an orthopedic. Um, in front of that is going to be the, th uh, the first cuneiform, and there are three cuneiforms here, one, two, and three, or medial, intermediate, and lateral is another way to express them. Three cuneiforms, and then on the other side of that is the cuboid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the cuboid. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. In front of the so here's the uh, basically the fifth metatarsal for the uh, the uh, peroneus brevis tendon. We got the five metatarsals, and then the phalanges are at the end. Uh, if you look at the foot from the side, from the medial side and the lateral side, you can see that you have a pretty high medial arch. The lateral side, not so much so. Uh, the normal person, the footprint in the sand when you're walking down the beach, it should be something like, like that. <laughs> we are all seeing the lateral side. If you're from uh, Arkansas or Ardmore, that's where that's your like Hilton, Hilton counts too. Um, so this is this is the low bearing part of your of your foot right there. It shows it on the medial side. Understand there's a difference between the load bearing part and your footprint. Okay? The medial arch is uh, let's say much higher. What's what's the um, what's the uh, state slogan for Pennsylvania? <laughs> oh, how did you hear? You guys don't know what it is? <laughs> you see it on the license plate. I'll give you a hint. Uh, sunshine <laughs> oh, it's not the sunshine. Florida. 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 <laughs> Arrow, baby. That's the seal that's on their license plate. What is that? It's a rainbow. Is that not the art of Pursue your hat. What is the middle stone? A keystone. Oh, a the keystone. Key. Pennsylvania is the keystone state. What did you say? Capstone. 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 So the key. Yeah, why can I say keystone? Keystone. The keystone. Alcohol's bad. Yeah. Of the medial arch. Keystone medial. Is the head of the talus. The keystone of the medial arch is the head of the talus. That keeps the arch up. And actually there's a ligament underneath there, right there. It's called the spring ligament, like summer fall spring ligament. That supports the head of the talus. You can see the head of the talus right here more effectively being the, the <coughs> keystone than in that previous slide. Now, here's the thing I was talking to you earlier about, is that the inversion, eversion of the foot is, is carried out by the transverse tarsal line here and the metatarsals. So, when you're out in the pasture, and the cows are in the pasture, and you know where the tractor goes, and the truck goes, like that, it forms two ruts out in the, out in the pasture. Why is it the cows always work, walk in the middle, or on the sides, but they never walk in the ruts? Is that like the same reason why they don't go on an elevator? What? Uh, elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> no, it's because a cow doesn't have a transverse parcel line. <laughs> they, can't, they can't do that. That's why they can't do their feet like that to walk in the run. That's why they walk on the flat part. <laughs> You people need to get out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. I, I can't. I'm perfectly good at dancing. Sure, are there cow on an elevator? Okay. Yes, they don't know what I'm talking about. And if they go out, they don't have. You can make their cows 
A cow. The, the cows, the hoof of a cow are their toes. They have no inversion, eversion. So they have no uh, movement of the foot. So we, well, we can walk like that. They can't. Yeah, they have to keep. You know, they prefer to keep it flat. Although. <laughs> I know. So driving back to North Carolina, you go through the, the uh, Appalachian Mountains, and there are cows up on the mountains. And there are cows on the mountains. And I remember the first time I told my wife that in North Carolina, this is the first time in North Carolina that breed cows where the <laughs> left two legs are shorter than the right. That way they're always on the side of the hill. They always face, that we just happen to pass by, cows that were all facing in the same direction. And they always face that way because the two legs, they can't go the other way or they'll roll out here. And uh, for about 30 seconds, you believe me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you believe me now. <laughs> Let's have to wait for the queue. Okay. You know, I was, I was worried about um, these people be making too much noise and having to tell them to shut up. But actually, it's probably us. Yeah. <laughs> or at least shut up. Okay, here's the spring ligament right here. Also called the calcaneo navicular ligament. Right there. The spring ligament. You have other ligaments of the foot. Uh, the long and short plantar ligaments. There are just a ton of ligaments. There, there are different types of... Um, support of the arch is passive and active support. Passive support is these ligaments are in place. They're just there. When it says active, active or dynamic support, the tendons of these long muscles that go up underneath the malleoli or, uh, or in the anterior compartment pulling up, they, they, they are dynamic. Unless they're contracting, they don't support the arch like the passive ones, okay? Unless they're contracting, they don't really support the arch. Oh, okay, so here's the sole of the foot right here. I'll do an ankle dissection so you can see the deltoid <coughs> versus the anterior tetrafibular ligament. But the, these ligaments here on the bottom, uh, I'll see if I can find uh, the spring ligament for you. Here's the spring ligament right there. There's a long plantar uh, ligament, there's a short plantar ligament. I don't care that you know those. Um, I'm not going to tag the spring ligament uh, because you're never going to see it clinically. Um, but you should know its significance in here. Okay? So if we look at the uh, muscles of the foot themselves, um, we had all the longest muscles up here. The brevis muscles are in the on the foot itself. You have the uh, uh, extensor hollis brevis, extensor digital brevis. I don't think that um, I'm not going to tag these guys because clinically they're not really relevant. Uh, they're so small and weak, they don't really contribute that much to movement of the toes. On the sole of the foot, there are a whole bunch of muscles down here, the intrinsic muscles of the foot. And they're named similar to what you saw up in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, the hand. Believe it or not, you know, you have an abductor hollisus brevis uh, and an abductor digiti minimi. And so definitely do not know, do not spend time memorizing those unless you're some, you know, happen to be a squirrel monkey and it's relevant to hanging upside down in the tree, you're really not going to deal with it, okay? Lacerations of the foot uh, are usually not, they can be deep, and penetrating objects of the foot can go all the way through the foot like nails, but you're really not going to spend any time with these specific muscles, okay? Um, in the sole of the foot, you have, as you've already seen, those of you that started the section, you have a really thick plantar aponeurosis um, like we had in the hand, uh, the palm of the hand. Now this, is, this does have clinical relevance uh, because of a disorder called 
plantar fasciitis. I'll bring it up later on. And it is an inflammatory process involving this aponeurosis. And it can be very painful and very irritating. And you will definitely see patients with this in your office, plantar fasciitis. You get up underneath that and you're going to get into the long tendons uh, that are coming down. Here's flexor digitorum longus. You see, there's the crossing between hollisus, flexor hollisus longus, and flexor digitorum longus right there. There's the crossing right under the medial malleolus. When you take the practical on Monday and you're looking at the, looking at the foot, um, look for the big toe to identify the structure. Make sure you've got, you have medial versus lateral correct. Look for the big toe. And you have quite a few small muscles that are uh, in the uh, sole of the foot itself. They're actually arranged in four layers of depth. The most superficial layer is here. This is the flexor digitorum brevis. If you take the brevis out, there's a muscle that attaches to the back of the flexor digitorum longus called quadratus plantae. This is one you don't have an analogous muscle in the palm for. Quadratus plantae attaches to the back of that tendon. This is as far as I want you to go in the dissection. Take that digitorum brevis off to see quadratus plantae and to see that tendon right there. That's as far as I want you to go. You can see it again here. There's the digitorum. And it has lumbricals off of it just like it does in the hand. And there's quadratus plantae. The only reason I want you to see quadratus plantae has no clinical uh, relevance. It's just a cool muscle. It really is cool. Uh, the third and fourth layers uh, of the, of the uh, foot, here's all the, the information in terms of mechanism, I mean, uh, function, innervation, and everything, uh, just for your convenience. The third and fourth layers are even deeper here. You have adductors, abductors, and so on of the uh, great toe. You even have interosseae like you do in the palm. Do not worry about those. When you get on your orthopedic surgery rotation, you might want to go back and review those. The only reason I'm telling you about it now is to tell you that surgeons will tell you there are four layers. So I don't want you to get out there and, well, I don't know how many layers there are in the foot. There are four layers of muscles in the foot. The deepest layer, of course, is going to be the interosseae. Here are the medial and lateral plantar nerves. These things are easy to find and dissect in a lab. You don't need to follow. Once you find them in the foot, you follow them down a little ways. Um, you know, they're good taggable structures, so if you might want to see them. Um, if it's going to be medial or lateral plantar nerves, if it's medial plantar nerves, it'll be out here on the big toe. Lateral plantar nerves is going to be over there in your, in your pinky. Okay. Uh, maybe take, maybe take a break. Take a break. Take a few minutes break. Then we'll come back. <laughs> Anyone have three dimes? Trying to buy a soda. <laughs> Do you have three dimes? 
I have Right. No! Do you have three times? My wallet's in the car. That is unfortunate. I'm sorry. My wallet is in the car. I just realized it's in my black bag. I can do this. There's gotta be enough loose change around here somewhere. No help. Yay! Yay! I probably shouldn't leave my wallet in the car. Probably not. Oh, my God. And it was I was so